Hello, I'm Randolph Campbell, known as Mike Campbell. I'm the chief historian of the Texas State Historical Association. Uh, more than 30 years ago, I published a book on uh, Harrison County, Texas from 1850 to 1880. I called it A Southern Community in Crisis. Uh, the TSHA is uh, republishing that book this year. Uh, never mind that I'm the chief historian who's republishing his own book. That's, uh, that's just what happens. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today is, is uh, a Harrison County story that isn't in that book because I found it later, but I think it's, uh, I think it's worth telling. Uh, the story is called uh, Texas Confederate Veteran Pensions, The Curious Cases of Guy and Dora Shaw of Harrison County. Now, the first point I want to make is that the Civil War cost the lives of approximately 750,000 soldiers in the armies of the United States and the Confederate, uh, in the Confederate States. But of course, the human devastation caused by the conflict extended far beyond uh, the four years of fighting from 1861 to 1865. As you would expect, many thousands of soldiers suffered debil debilitating wounds from which they never fully recovered. Thousands more paid a uh, long-term price in health problems resulting from marching and camping uh, in the rain and the cold. And then, of course, as they aged, a certain percentage of veterans suffered financial failures and faced old age without the means to, leave, to live decently. Now, the United States government provided pensions for disabled and indigent veterans of the Union Army, but those who fought for the Confederacy had to rely on Southern state governments for any form, any form of support. Texas was the last of the former Confederate states to institute a pension system, but finally, in 1899, the state legislature acted. They provided pensions of $8 a month to all qualifying Confederate veterans. Now, as a point of reference on this, uh, $8 a month doesn't sound like a great deal today. Uh, in 1899, when that was provided, it would have had the purchasing power of $230 in 2015. And then if you add, extend that out to a year, it means that a veteran's pension, Texas veterans, Confederate veteran's pension in 1899 was approximately $2,760 a year in 2015 dollars. Now that may not sound like much to you again, and I wouldn't want to try to live through the year on $2,760, but you have to remember most of Texas was rural. These people were living with, with relatives. They weren't having to pay housing. They had help undoubtedly with food. They lived in rural areas. So it, it isn't quite as small as it sounds, and I'm sure anything helped. But again, $8 a month was what, what the basic pension was when it first began. Now, to apply for a, Confederate, uh, a Texas Confederate veterans pension on the grounds of being in poor health or being uh, indigent, men had to, had to complete a form three legal size pages in length that call for information on their personal backgrounds, their service in the Confederate Army, how long they had lived in Texas, and their current financial status. The form also required sworn statements from two witnesses concerning the applicant's service and a certificate from the local uh, assessor of state and county taxes indicating the value of the property, if there was any, uh, that the applicant owned. As the years passed, Texas's pension rules, like those of other states, were gradually relaxed, so they included other classes of people who were in need, uh, such as the widows uh, of veterans. By 1916, there were 18,000 recipients of Texas Confederate uh, veterans' pensions in Texas. 